The great Stoic philosopher Seneca had once described a foolish person as, The fool, with all his other faults, has this also. He is always getting ready to live. Stoicism is an ancient and timeless philosophy, and among many other things, it talks about human behaviors. While Stoics put a lot of emphasis on certain virtues, they also thought that there are some things which we need to avoid, and Stoics think that only fools would do something like that. Stoics encourages us to focus on inner peace and tranquility, and not to be disturbed by the opinion of other people. This is one of the basic tenets of Stoicism, and I'll describe it in the words of Marcus Aurelius. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. Marcus Aurelius is amazed at people. He says that we value ourselves more than others, but when it comes to opinions, we care more about the opinions of others than our own. We seek external validation and approval, and according to Stoics, this is a recipe for emotional disturbance. Epictetus describes this concept in the following words, If you are ever tempted to look for outside approval, realize that you have compromised your integrity. So, according to Epictetus, seeking external approval is a sign of compromising our own integrity. We need to look at our own moral compass and be honest with ourselves. Seneca had similar views. In his essay on the firmness of the wise man, he says, The Stoic pays no attention to what others consider shameful or miserable. He does not walk with the crowd. Seneca says that Stoics take actions based on their principles and beliefs. They are not concerned with the disapproval of others. Stoics should not look at external standards or popular opinions. Instead, they need to choose a path of reason, principles, and their own understanding of virtue. So Stoics think that worrying about the opinion of others will cause us to compromise our own values and integrity. This will cause us to act in ways that satisfy other people, rather than upholding our own morals, principles, and beliefs. However, on the flip side, it is okay to get some feedback. It is okay if not everyone agrees with you. Stoics warn us about suffering imaginary problems. They think that our minds are powerful and our imaginations are strong, and most of the time, our minds amplify our anxieties and fears, which causes unnecessary suffering. Seneca has explained this concept beautifully. He says, We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. These words of Seneca are self-explanatory. He thinks that we suffer more from our imaginations than from actual reality. We just exaggerate our potential future problems and dangers. Seneca thinks that it is a characteristic of our mind to exaggerate sorrows. He says, We are in the habit of exaggerating or imagining or anticipating sorrow. In one of his letters to Lucilius, Seneca says, There are more things likely to frighten us than there are to crush us. Epictetus had similar views. He says, Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. It is natural for humans to think about the future, and oftentimes we create certain scenarios about the future that are inspired by our fears and anxieties. Stoics think that this anticipatory anxiety is an unnecessary suffering. Seneca, who was once a big proponent of this idea, has given a remedy for this. In his letter to Lucilius, which is even named On Groundless Fears, Seneca says, What I advise you to do is not to be unhappy before the crisis comes, since it may be that the dangers before which you paled as if they were threatening you will never come upon you. They certainly have not yet come. So to summarize the advice of Stoics, we don't need to suffer in advance. That is an unnecessary suffering. Fears, worries, and anxieties about the future are natural, but we need to understand that most of the time, these fears don't actually come true. It is just our mind which exaggerates things. Stoics think that we don't need to be carried away by our thoughts about the past or future. The best strategy is to live in the present moment. Seneca has done a fantastic job of explaining this idea. He says, Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. 
Seneca thinks that dwelling on the past and fearing the future will paralyze us and prevent us from enjoying the beauty of the present moment. Life is precious, and at the same time it is fleeting, and we need to be fully engaging with the present moment. Seneca also says that the whole future lies in uncertainty, live immediately. In his book Meditations, Marcus Aurelius explains this concept in the following words. Do not dwell on all the various troubles which may have occurred in the past or may occur in the future. Just ask yourself in each instance of the present, what is there in this work which I cannot endure or support? In this quote, Marcus Aurelius provides some practical advice. He says that we don't need to dwell in the past or future because that will keep us trapped in anxieties. The best approach is to experience the richness and beauty of the present moment. In Meditations, the famous book of Marcus Aurelius, the author is constantly emphasizing on living in the present moment. So, Stoics think that worries and anxieties are the two main reasons for our problems. We are often worried about the past and are anxious about the future. And in between this worry and anxiety, we waste the precious thing in hand, the present moment. If we want a happy life, we will have to anchor ourselves to the present moment. Marcus Aurelius explains this concept in a clear and elegant manner. Give yourself a gift, the present moment. This is one of the fundamental principles of Stoicism and is also called dichotomy of control. Among Stoics, Epictetus was a strong supporter of this idea, and I'll describe this in his words. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters, so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals and not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Epictetus thinks that we need to understand the limits of our control. We need to clearly distinguish between things which are in our control and which are outside of our control. He thinks that it is one of the most important tasks of our lives to focus our energy on things which are in our control and not to have the slightest worry about things which are outside of our control. As I mentioned earlier, Epictetus was a big proponent of this idea, and in his words, Epictetus calls this the only way to happiness and freedom. Marcus Aurelius had similar thoughts. In his book Meditations, Marcus Aurelius writes these words, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius explains that we need to focus on internal control and not to worry about external events. We cannot change external events like bad weather or people's actions. And in this case, we need to focus internally. In simple words, this philosophy can be summarized in a sentence. Outside of control, outside of worry. Stoics think that complaining has no effect on the situation and we should avoid it. However, you need to understand that they're talking about complaining about your physical attributes, place of birth, your color or ethnicity, or any other difficulties in life. Marcus Aurelius says that, Don't be overheard complaining, not even to yourself. In this quotation, Marcus Aurelius advises us that we need to reject complaining right away and not to indulge in complaining at all, not even to ourselves. Complaining causes further dissatisfaction and anxiety. In his book Meditations, Marcus Aurelius stresses upon this concept in the following words, Everything that happens is either endurable or not. If it's endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. If it's unendurable, then stop complaining. This is a powerful message from a powerful emperor, Marcus Aurelius. He thinks that we need to courageously face whatever life throws at us. He thinks that complaining is not an option. If something is endurable, we need to endure it and stop complaining. If something isn't, then still we don't need to complain at all. Again, not to forget, this advice of not complaining is coming from a man who is the emperor and probably the most powerful man of his time. In regard to not complaining, Seneca had similar thoughts. In his letters to Lucilius, Seneca says, Now all the things which cause complaint or dread are like the taxes of life, things from which, my dear Lucilius, you should never hope for exemption or seek escape. Seneca thinks that we might encounter some challenges in life that are woven into the fabric of our lives, and we need to accept them as part of life's terrain instead of complaining about them. 
So the main lesson Stoics want us to understand is that we need to focus on solving the problem instead of complaining. There are things which we cannot control like bad weather, terminal illness, people's opinions, our facial features, our place of birth, etc. And we don't need to complain about these things. We need to shift our mindset, focus on the solution, or simply accept what is outside of our control. During my study of Stoicism, I found that every Stoic philosopher is associated with some concept. And I think Marcus Aurelius was well known for the concept of embracing change. He says, Frightened of change? But what can exist without it? Can any vital process take place without something being changed? Marcus Aurelius emphasizes the necessity of change. He says that change is inevitable, growth is only possible through change, and change is necessary for the birth of new things. He further explains this concept in his book, Meditations. Constant awareness that everything is born from change. The knowledge that there is nothing nature loves more than to alter what exists and make new things like it. In this quote, Marcus Aurelius says that nothing exists or develops without going through change. Change is vital for the birth of new things. We need to accept that life is dynamic. We might see a change in the trajectory of our career, relationships may blossom or sour, financial status could worsen, we may see a job loss or promotion. In short, change is an inevitable part of our lives, and we should always be prepared for it. Stoics think that it'll be foolish to think that there is a straight-line trajectory of our lives. We need to embrace the everlasting nature of change. As I mentioned earlier, Marcus Aurelius was a big fan of embracing the change, and in his book Meditations, we see a lot of references to change. He calls change the nature's delight. He says that it is the destiny of everything to change, transform, and to perish, so that new things can be born. He says that our strategy should be to take an active part in the transformation, learn from it, and then use it as a catalyst for personal growth. In his book Meditations, Marcus Aurelius describes this concept in the following words. Is any man afraid of change? What can take place without change? What then is more pleasing or more suitable to universal nature? Time is precious and the most valuable asset we have. It is a non-renewable resource, and Stoics think that only a fool would waste time. Seneca has written extensively on this topic, and he has written a whole essay on this topic, which is called On the Shortness of Life. And one of my favorite lines from this essay is this, It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Life is long enough, and a sufficiently generous amount has been given to us for the highest achievements if it were all well invested. These lines are remarkable and have a profound impact on me. Seneca challenges the widespread belief that life is short. He argues that life is not short, but it is us who make it short by wasting a lot of it. He believes that although life is finite, but it still has enough time to accomplish any great achievement if it is well invested. There is another beautiful line in his book where Seneca says, We are not given a short life, but we make it so, and we are not ill-supplied but wasteful of it. The meaning of these iconic words is clearly evident. Seneca thinks that we need to use our time wisely and intentionally. The last part of this quotation conveys a very powerful message. We are not ill-supplied, but wasteful of it. Now let's look at another great Stoic philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, who also happened to be the Emperor of Rome. He had a lot of workload and responsibilities. Being Emperor, he fought in battles, went through plagues and famines, wrote an extensive book of philosophy, and yet he was still very successful and productive. In fact, he is considered among the five best emperors of Rome. So, how did he accomplish all of this? It is through time management. Marcus Aurelius writes in his book Meditations that concentrate every minute like a Roman. He further says, most of what we say and do is not essential. If you can eliminate it, you'll have more time and more tranquility. Ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? So, Stoics think that time is very precious and we should not waste it. Time is not renewable. It is something that once lost cannot be recovered or regained. You can earn more money, but you cannot earn more time. We need to spend our time wisely.
Stoics highlight the importance of living a meaningful life. They think that we have the ability to make our lives richer and more fulfilling. They constantly offer guidance on some topics, but there are other things which they advise against. What was your favorite Stoic principle among these seven? Tell me in the comments. For more videos about Stoicism, check my playlist. This video took a lot of time and money to research, edit, and produce. If you found it valuable, consider buying me a coffee.